What's up guys, Brent with electricbikereview.com here and today we are going over the Flash V1 electric bike. So this thing runs for $19.99 or two grand pretty much. It's got a top speed of 28 miles per hour. It's got a throttle and pedal assist. It's got a max estimated range of 50 miles, but I think realistically it's probably gonna be a little bit less than that. Of course, depending on you know rider weight, terrain, kind of riding conditions, what pedal assist mode you're in, stuff like that. And it's also got a 500 watt motor. So we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at this bike. It's got some really cool stuff. And right off the bat, I just wanted to point out some things that I really do like um, about the Flash V1. First and foremost, I just like the way it looks. I mean, it's got this kind of single tube frame here. Just that nice, like really sloped looking frame. It's just very compact very sleek looking, very urban uh, in my opinion. And it's also got these really cool tail lights right here and headlights right here. And they just kind of remind me of, uh, the, of the Van Moof electric bikes, just the way that it looks. I think that's really cool. And one of the very coolest things about it is it has this integrated uh, control system right here into the down tube, which is very reminiscent of something you would find on a Stromer bike. And of course, as you guys probably know, the Stromer bikes are pretty expensive. I mean, those things can run for upwards of 10 grand, somewhere around there. So it's just kind of cool to see tech that you would find on a much higher priced electric bike on something like this, the Flash V1. So let's go ahead and start up here just with the handlebars. Uh, so this thing, again, it is throttle and it is pedal assist as well. So the throttle is right here on the right hand side. The grips and the throttle as well are really tacky. They've got a nice texture to them. Um, on the handlebars here, on the right hand side, we've got the Shimano gear shifter. This is a seven speed electric bike, and this is a thumb shifter. So you can th use your thumb here to shift up, and then you can press this little button right here and that'll shift down gears. Um, and then on the right hand side, we've also got a couple of the electronic features. So this has a 85 decibel horn, and you can activate that by pressing this button right here. And you've got the front headlight, which is, so when you have this thing on, it's got a, a running light, which I'll show you here in a few minutes, but it also has a 450 lumen um, headlamp as well, which is pretty bright. It's pretty cool um, and you can activate that you can toggle it on and off right here with these buttons And it also has turn signals these little guys right here So on the left and the right we've got left and right um, turn signals respectively And what's cool is the lights will blink here on the front and rear of the light when you hit the turn signal So it's kind of like a neat little safety feature. I mean they're they're still the same color um, as the running light so it's gonna be white in the front and red in the back instead of you know, like yellow on a car. So it's not as noticeable as something you would find on a car, but even still the fact that it does have that, I think is a, a really cool uh, little feature. And again, it just kind of adds to the kind of increased safety aspect. So I really dig that. On the left-hand side here, we've got the uh, pedal assist modes. That's how you switch up and down through the pedal assist. And again, I'll show you guys that here in a second when we get to the control center. But I just want to give you a quick rundown of what's here on the handlebars. So we've got the pedal assist up and down here on the left. And then if we move to the front of the handlebars, We've got uh, the front and rear disc brakes. So these are mechanical disc brakes and they're 180 millimeter, which is nice. So that means that they're you know a little bit larger than they need to be, which does add to a little bit of the stopping power, but they are mechanical disc brakes, which means that they're not hydraulic, right? So that's pretty obvious. But with mechanical disc brakes, as you can see here, it's got a wire that feeds down from the handlebars, from the brake lever, to the brakes here so it's not pistons it's pads like uh you know like a car um and you know there's just pros and cons to that i think you know if you have mechanical brakes you've got a wire and wires can stretch over time however they're a lot easier to adjust in my opinion than they are than hydraulic brakes are so you know just kind of some pros and cons of that just something to be aware of also up here on the brakes definitely interesting to note is that whenever you hit the front or rear brakes, there are motor inhibitors that feed down to the motor. So whenever you hit the brakes, the motor will, will automatically stop giving power. So that's really great because it means a couple of things. It means that when you are hitting the brakes that you're not going to be putting unnecessary wear on the motor if you continue to pedal or if you're hitting the throttle um, because there's basically no way to accidentally hit the brakes and have the motor running. So that's, that's a good feature I think for um, you know, just kind of increasing the longevity of the bike, the overall just, uh, you know, length that it should be running for you. Um, but there is not regenerative braking, which, you know, in my opinion, I don't really think that it's that big of a deal. Regen braking at this stage of the technology, it's not, I mean, it's not that effective. You're only getting like anywhere from like 10 to 30%, depending on the estimate. So 
really not a big deal in my opinion that, that it does not have regen braking, but I did want to point that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on real quick, just so we can go over some of the kind of the lights and the features like that. So to turn this thing on, all you have to do is kind of tap the control center, which is again right here on the down tube. And out of the factory, the code to unlock it is just a bunch of ones. So we'll tap that in five ones and then the screen pops up. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then there are only really three main kind of bits of information that you can see on the control center right here on the down tube. You've got a seven bar battery indicator up here on the top. You've got your current speed and you have what level of pedal assist you're in. So when you start out, whenever you turn on the flash, it's always going to start in pedal assist zero. So that means that you can't activate the throttle. You can't use pedal assist. It's basically just a regular bike. Now, if you want to actually use the bike and use the motor, you have to come back up here to the um, pedal assist selector, hit up, and you'll see that you can actually start going up through the pedal assist modes. Now, if you do want a little bit more information, uh, there is a app that goes along with the flash, and this is what the app looks like when you first start it up. Uh, it just kind of gives you a brief overview of what percentage of batteries left. It tells you where your bike is at. It's got GPS tracking in here. And if you want to actually get to some of the um, stats you know, of the bike itself, you just hit the little button at the bottom, press dashboard, agree, and then you get a little bit more, not a whole lot more. It will tell you the same thing that you kind of see on the down tube here, you're gonna get your current speed, you're gonna get how much battery is left, but it's a little bit more precise. So you can see we got 14% left, that's a little bit low. Uh, we've got pedal, what level of pedal assist, you can power the bike on or off, um, or you can turn it off and arm it. And then if you swipe over, we've got the total distance. Swipe over one more time. Whoops, okay, just quit. Okay. And if you swipe over one more time, you see that we've got the total riding time uh, for this ride. Okay, so there are definitely some, some other cool features to go over real quick um, with this control center. So when you turn off the bike, there's two ways to turn it off. You just swipe to turn it off and then you can press off or you can press off and arm. So if you turn the bike off, it basically is just like turning off any normal electric bike, right? Now, if you press off and arm, oops, let's go back here. If you press off and arm, like that. Now the bike is in armed mode. So inside the flash, there is a GPS and there's also cell service. So this thing connects to your phone, right? With the app. And when the bike is off, if you jostle it or if you move it around, it'll beep. Let's see if we can get this thing to beep real quick. Yeah. So it'll start beeping at you. And that lets people know anybody who's maybe trying to steal the bike or trying to mess with it, that, Hey, there's an alarm on this, you know, stop messing with it. Um, if you continue to move it, after like a few seconds, once it's been you know jostled the first time, the bike will have a much louder alarm that will go off. And it will also send an alert to your phone that tells you exactly where your bike is. So if you wanna track it, if you wanna give that information to the police, whatever, you know where your bike is. Like it's tracking it in real time, which is a really cool feature. Um, now again, the cell service is connected to the bike. It's inside the bike and it's, um, it's, it's something that comes from the factory. And as long as Flash is in business, it's free of charge. Like it comes with the bike. Once you purchase it, you don't have to pay any extra cellular fees. You don't have to connect it you know, to your cell service. It's just, it's just like an automatic thing that's built in the, into the bike. And I really like that. It's a really, really cool feature. So if we go back here, let's tap to disarm, put in the code 1111. And the other way to turn it off is to swipe and just press off like that and it just powers the bike down now because there is a gps and cell service kind of always keeping track of where this bike is that's great for safety but it does mean that it's always going to be drawing a little bit of power from the bike itself so like let's say for instance you wanted to arm your bike leave it in your garage and go on vacation for like a week or so well, you would come back and you would find that your bike is probably at about 50% power. And that's because this thing is always drawing just a little bit of power because of the GPS and the cell service that's in there. Um, and now the other thing about that is even if you leave the bike plugged in while you're gone, it's still going to, it's still going to drain a little bit because how the charger works is once it gets the bike to capacity, once it's full, the power, the charger shuts off. So it's not going to kind of trickle charge it and keep it at full capacity. So. That is, you know, just something to note about this bike in particular. So let's turn it back on one more time so I can show you guys the lights on this thing. Now, once the bike is on, when it's in the on mode, you'll get a steady blinking of lights 
on the front. Oh, the headlight's actually on, so let's turn that off. Okay, so this is what it looks like. These are the, the kind of always on running lights. They just kind of blink. Um, and again, it's just one of those, it, it seems like an added safety feature just to let people know where you are to increase visibility. And then if you do want to actually use the headlights, you just hold the button down on the front. There's three modes, high, medium, and low. You can cycle through them with a quick press and that's what they look like. Now, the lights are surprisingly bright on this. They're actually pretty good quality. I, I really do like the headlight. However, because it's integrated into the frame and it's actually integrated right here and not on the handlebars, it means that it's always shooting straight ahead. And it also means that you can't adjust the angle. So basically, wherever this thing is from the factory, that's the beam pattern you're going to get. You cannot change it, it's locked in. So just something to keep in mind. And then now over here on the back, same thing, we've got red lights in the back. And then when the bike is on, it will be kind of this intermittent flashing, same thing in the front. And again, that's just kind of the increase of visibility. Now what's cool, let's see if I can get this shot here, is when you have the bike on and you hit the, the brake levers, you actually get a brake light, just like a car, which is awesome. Like, I love that, that is so, so cool. Again, it's pretty bright. I mean, you can definitely see it really well during the daytime and even better at night. Um, and I just love that. I love that there's a lot of, like in my opinion, just safety features built into this thing. Like safety is a really cool, really cool thing for me. Like I, you know, I don't want to get hit by a car. I want people to see me at night, um, especially with a frame color like this, this kind of gray. I mean, it's not like a super easy color to see at night. So having these, these extra lights on the bike, the turn signal, stuff like that, like it just, it just improves safety overall. And again, just real quick so you can see the turn signals. If you hit the left turn signal here, that's what it looks like in the back. This is what it looks like in the front. And you guys can probably hear that little beeping sound. That's just to let you know, I think, that the the uh, turn signal is on. And also, if there's anybody nearby, it just kind of gives them uh, you know, an, aud an auditory cue of, hey, this is what's going on. Press the turn signal again to turn it off. And also, again, while we're up here, let's just listen to the horn real quick. So it's more like a beep, but it's pretty loud. It's like 85 decibels. And you know, it's also good if you want to communicate with other bikers via, via Morse code. Okay, maybe it's not so good for that, but you could do it if you wanted to. That's kind of cool, whatever. Uh, let's see what else is what's really cool about this bike. Let's talk about the frame uh, really quick. So again, the frame is something that I like about this bike. I do like the way it looks. Very sweet looking, very compact, very urban. Now, the issue though, with or a potential issue of having a kind of single tube frame like this is that you can definitely get some frame flex and with a with a bike that goes 28 miles per hour for top speed i mean frame flex is definitely not something that you want because you can get you know you can get speed wobbles and that can just be a, a very unsafe thing at high speeds now I did not find that to be the case with this bike. I'm a 200 pound rider um, and I did not get any frame flex at all even when going top speed. Now, I think the reason for that is because there are three gussets built into this frame. So we got one here, one here, and one up here on the front. And now these gussets basically add structural integrity to the frame and they add, a, they basically increase rigidity and they, they do a really good job of kind of just sturdying this thing up. And again, like I, I didn't feel any frame flex. So obviously these gussets are doing their job. Um, and it was a really stable ride. Like it, it, it really surprised me. Now inside the frame here, we've got the batteries. So these are Panasonic batteries. They're 36 volt, 11.6 amp. And again, they allow you to ride for an estimated 50 miles um, according to flash. Now I think that probably, you, you know, I would get quite a bit less than that because I'm a 200 pound rider and you know, I'm always going full speed. I'm always on the top pedal assist mode. But uh, anyways, they estimate 50 miles. So that's what it is. Now, the thing about these batteries are Panasonic. That's great. But the batteries, you can remove them, okay? They, you, you can remove the batteries. There's a spot right here. You can undo this, but in order to access it, you have to take off the back wheel. You got to unscrew this cap, take the battery out. So is the battery swappable? Yes. Is it easily swappable? I would say probably not. And I think that really kind of changes the, you know, the overall paradigm of what this bike is about, right? Like, to me, originally I thought this would be a really cool commuter bike, but like here's an example of why I think maybe it's more of like a short distance urban bike. Um, like let's say you are, you wanna use this thing to commute and you wanna head up to, to work, you wanna take it to work. And let's say your work is like 20 miles away, you get there 
and you know your bike you're almost out of batteries once you do get there well unless you have an office or somewhere where you can bring this entire bike up to charge it like you really can't recharge this thing on the go like you're gonna have to wait till you get back home bring it into your garage or whatever and again even if you do bring it back home like you're gonna probably have to bring it inside your house and you know if this is supposed to be an urban bike and you live in an urban setting like you might have stairs to go up and it just basically is going to make charging this thing a little bit more difficult um, as opposed to if it was a removable battery now on the flip side even if that was the case if you did have to carry it upstairs if you did have to take it into your office this thing only weighs 45.7 pounds which is um, you know it's a decent bit less than most electric bikes which weigh around 50 pounds so I mean at least you have that so if you do have to take this thing upstairs if you do have to take it inside it's not as heavy as most bikes that's definitely definitely a cool feature so down here we've got the cadence sensor so this is a cadence sensor um, as opposed to a torque sensor so just real quick um, in case anybody out there doesn't know the difference between a cadence sensor and a torque sensor just a quick rundown um, a cadence sensor like this here uses magnets um, and it measures the actual rotation of the pedals of the bike of the cranks here and then that's how it knows uh, hey we're actually moving you're giving you're trying to pedal you need power and then it administers full power from the uh, from the 500 watt hub motor back here but with a torque sensor it uses it, it measures how much torque how much pressure you're actually putting on the pedals and then it kind of gives you a little bit more of an accurate output of power as opposed to just you know bam full power from the cadence sensor so um, just a little bit different uh, now with this cadence sensor there's uh, 12 magnets so it's it's pretty sensitive like as soon as you start pedaling this thing knows that you're in motion and it administers power really really quickly and it also shuts off the power pretty quickly as well which is kind of an issue that I found with some cadence sensors where you know maybe it starts really quickly but um, you know it takes a minute to shut off and that can be kind of difficult if you're trying to go at a really slow rate of speed so with this bike it starts quickly and it shuts off quickly I dig that Back here, we've got the Turney derailleur. So this is kind of a, this is an entry level derailleur. Um, and you know, that's fine. I mean, there's, there's some really cool, you know, electrical components to this bike. And I think in order to save money, um, you know, Flash is kind of using some lower end components like the Turney here and like the mechanical brakes, like I showed you guys up here in the front, as opposed to having um, hydraulic disc brakes. So, um, you know, that's just, it is what it is. Not a big deal, just something to point out. And then again, just here's a quick shot of the brakes and the other side of the bike here. And again, these are 180 millimeter brakes. So, uh, you know, a little bit larger than, than they need to be, which adds to some, some good stopping power. Now the tires here are 26 inch tires, which are a little bit smaller than normal. Um, you know, normally they're 27, 28 inch tires. And I think that kind of just adds to this overall like compact look, this kind of urban feel of this bike. It just, it really adds to that kind of sleek look. And I, I dig that it's, it's very, very cool. The kickstand here in the middle, um, it's nice that it's in the middle because it's just nice and balanced. However, because it's in the middle, the pedals can get caught and you have to physically move the bike, like lift it up and then pedal forward um, to get this thing out of the way. So that can be an issue. Mostly if you are having this thing, like let's say it's in a garage or a tight space and you're trying to pull this bike back, well, with the pedal with the kickstand in the middle here you're going to be dragging the bike like physically dragging it um, again because the pedals get caught you know on the kickstand itself so just again just something to note up here in the front we've got the forks so there are no there's no suspension on this bike it's just solid forks here no suspension in the back um, and again in my mind that really kind of lends itself to more of a urban short distance electric bike not a a long-term commuter because i think that you know if you ride this thing for a long time with no suspension like it could get a little bit uncomfortable so yeah that's kind of how i view it you know an urban electric bike good for short distances good for going to a coffee shop whatever um so that's kind of a brief rundown of what we got here again really cool looking bike really sleek i want to take this thing out for a quick spin show you guys what it looks like in motion show you kind of what the motor sounds like how it rides stuff like that so we will get that going for you and we'll be back in just a second okay so we're just getting started here in the second pedal assist mode we are in second gear and i just wanted to show you guys that even at a standstill you can actually activate the throttle here as long as you are in a positive pedal assist mode so we are at zero miles per hour standing still and if you twist the throttle you do actually get motion so again that's one of the things i was talking about it's kind of a cool safety feature when you turn the bike off it starts in pedal assist zero 
Um, but when the bike is in a positive pedal assist mode, uh, the throttle's active, so you just want to be careful because it's easy to, you know, hit the throttle by accident when the bike is standing still and it's, you know, the thing can get away from you. So just something to keep in mind. So as soon as I give this thing any pedaling whatsoever, the motor activates. It's really sensitive. And then pretty much as soon as I stop pedaling, about a half second later, it shuts off. So again, it's really sensitive. And that's a really good feature. I like that. Whoa. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. All right, so we're going to crank it up into a higher pedal assist mode. We're going to go all the way up to four, and we're going to head into the grass over here and see what it feels like going through, you know, something where a little bit rougher terrain, something that would be kind of difficult to pedal in if you did not have an electric assist. So, I mean, as you guys can see, it's really pretty easy. The 500-watt motor is relatively powerful. I mean, it's not incredibly powerful, but it's enough to kind of get me through the grass <laughs> without much effort at all. This is wet grass. It's kind of tall. It hasn't been mowed in a little bit, so... There's definitely a lot of drag and it really just cuts through it pretty easily. So let's try the, the throttle only and see how that works here. Whoa. All right, so this is with a throttle only. And same thing, I mean, it's, it's enough juice to get me through and I can even accelerate going through here. So that's pretty cool. Let's get back on the sidewalk here. Okay, now we're gonna try a a brake test with one hand and see how that goes. So we'll bring it up to somewhat quick. We'll hit uh, maybe like 15 miles an hour or so. And then give it a brake test with one hand, see how it goes. Yeah, so again, not bad. These are the mechanical brakes, 180 millimeters. And, and even with one hand, this thing stops pretty quickly. So let's turn it around here. One of the things I like about having the throttle is that when you are pretty much at a standstill, like if you're at a stoplight or something, and you're gonna, or at a crosswalk, you can start going immediately just by hitting the throttle and that kind of gets you going. That's a really cool feature, I like that. So let's go ahead and switch up through the gears here a little bit. We'll get up into fifth gear, sixth, seventh, and this thing picks up speed pretty quickly. So we're going 17 miles an hour, 18, 19. Yeah, so hopefully that wasn't too much wind noise for you guys, but this thing does pick up speed, I mean, relatively quickly for just having a 500 watt motor, you know? Here's what the bell sounds like when you're actually in motion. Kind of, you know, it's loud enough to alert people that you're coming by. So starting at a low rate of speed, I just want to give you guys an idea of what the motor sounds like here. So it's definitely noisier than some motors, but it's not the noisiest thing in the world. Hopefully you guys can hear that over the wind noise here. So that's what we got for the motor. And that's pretty much it. Here's a turn signal. Turn and left here, it's going to turn around and press it again to turn it off. Boom, just like that. All right guys, so that is pretty much it for the Flash V1 review. I hope you guys dug this review. This was a really fun bike to review. Uh, I just wanna say thank you so much to Flash for partnering with us on this. And if you guys wanna see the full write-up, head over to electricbikereview.com and have a great day. Peace.